Hello, it is Tuesday, August 3rd, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to my New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Tuesday puzzle, so shouldn't be too much of a challenge. I'm going to continue to ease into the week with a relatively gentle crossword, I hope. I don't think there were any big corrections or um, particularly important context from yesterday's clue, so I figured I would I would pick up on a different comment instead. Duke Garland asks, Chris, do you ever solve the crossword with your partner yourself, or are they not interested in crosswords? Um, we don't solve the crossword together. Uh, my partner is an occasional crossword solver, I would say. Um, she would probably be uh, not at all a crossword solver, if not for me. Um, but because of my interest, she does occasionally do a crossword and actually hadn't been doing them for a while, but has started up again uh, since I've started doing this series. Um, she doesn't watch the series, which is fair enough. She spends enough time having to see and hear me all day long. But uh, but it, but my engagement with the series, I guess, has encouraged her to start doing the crosswords again. And it's fun because she can ask me for a little hint if she needs it. Uh, there are some categories of clue that... Uh, obviously she will have more knowledge than I uh, regarding because that's just how it works with crosswords. Some people know more about one thing, some people know more about the other thing. So if I'm doing a crossword and, and she's nearby and I'm hit, uh, butting up against something that I know is a, a challenge area for me, but less so for her, I'll ask her for a hint. Um, I guess I don't do that so much now that I'm on the series, but that would be traditionally the kind of thing we would do. Um, so yeah, we don't solve them together per se. Uh, but we often solve them in each other's vicinity. Uh, and it's a nice thing to uh, to be able to, I guess, have an easy way to sort of make use of particular esoteric knowledge that your partner might have that is um, less a part of your own sort of mental arsenal, I guess. Uh, but I do really like the idea of solving them Together, I mean, obviously, that's especially not the, not really practical in our case, given given my doing this video series. But I I really have enjoyed seeing all the comments from people, both on the um, comments under the video, also on Twitter, and through donations on my coffee page. A number of people have mentioned that in uh, private messages to me there, and I I just think that's really really nice. I think it's a very nice thing. Um, a crossword is a great sort of low impact way to uh, share knowledge and gain knowledge and test knowledge um, without, uh, there's no, it's not really competitive. I mean, it's sort of competitive against yourself, but it's not like playing a game against your partner or something like that. So I do think it's fun. It's a fun thing you could do with a friend or a partner or or whoever else and help each other improve. So anyway, let's let's help ourselves improve. Let's do a Tuesday puzzle. Let's see how it strikes us. This puzzle is by Trip Payne. It does not appear to have a title, which doesn't mean that it doesn't have a theme. We'll just have to see. Although themes less common on Tuesday, probably, I would say. Edited, as always, by Will Shorts. Ready to get started. Okay. Kit Blank Bar. Well, this is a brand, and I think a relatively international brand. It is a Kit Cat Bar. Or so blank say. Uh, this looks like or so they say. Oh, sorry. You know what I should have done before starting the solve at all was observing this geometry on the board. Um, this grid has four shaded three by three squares in the four quadrants of the grid. And I don't know what that means. I don't know what that's going to be. Presumably there will be the letters that fill out these shaded squares will have some significance to a theme. So uh, it does appear that we are on our way to a theme. Complimentary. This could be complimentary in the sense of uh, paying someone a compliment, being positive towards somebody's efforts. It could be complimentary um, to suggest that it is free if a gift is a complimentary gift, it's a free gift. I guess all gifts are free. It's sort of part of the definition, isn't it? And if that's the case, it could be gratis, maybe. Um, but I don't know which it is. Uh, we could either keep going or we could look at the crosses. Let's look at the crosses. Musical that was the highest grossing movie in 1978. Well, 
I have a guess here, and the guess comes directly from a crossword, I would say maybe two weeks ago, perhaps, uh, which is The Wiz, the musical adaptation of The Wizard of Oz, which then I guess was also filmed. Um, I'm guessing that purely because it's on my brain from that recent crossword. I don't know if this is the case, but we could look at this cross and see. It's not The Wiz. All right, it's not The Wiz. Because Venmo's parent company, I believe, is PayPal. So that put a stop to that pretty quickly. Deposit. Um, well, it could be deposit as in a financial deposit into an account. It could be a deposit, sort of a deposit of silt on the banks of a river or something like that. Uh, let's keep looking around here. So that musical, I probably am not going to know this offhand, although I suspect it will become easy with crosses. Any film that was the highest grossing film of the year probably is in the public consciousness to some degree. Less contrived. Well, we we assume it will end in ER, right? Because it's a, it's a, it's a sort of comparative adjective, uh, which tends to do that. Uh, body parts sometimes compared to steel. Um, I suppose abs. People talk about abs of steel, don't they? Uh-oh. Am I having this keyboard input error that I was having when I was on holiday? That's not exciting. I don't like that. I hope it doesn't. It's not an ongoing problem in this solve. Uh, complimentary. It looks like it could be gratis. Let's put that in and see what happens. So that musical, I still don't know. Less contrived. I mean, it could be realer. In other words, less of a contrivance, more more honest and real. I, I, that does, I don't really like the word realer. It sounds sort of awkward, but maybe it is. Ciao. Ciao. Ta-ta. Dealership offering. Well, okay, this is probably rebate, so maybe it is realer. Let's look over here. Occasion that people are dying to celebrate, and dying is spelled uh, not in the sense of death, but in the sense of coloring, I suppose, as in dyeing your hair. So Easter, dyeing eggs. Boy, this keyboard is really not doing many favors. Not thrilled about that. 10 blank or less grocery sign. Ah, uh, 10 items or less. Boo. Oh, no. Yeah, see, I'm having this input issue. Um, uh, so this is 10... 10 items or less, grocery sign, really should be 10 items or fewer, not 10 items or less, because uh, items are discreetly counted. Uh, you have one item, two item, three items. You have fewer of those. You have less of something that is um, sort of collectively measured. You have less water. You don't have fewer waters. You have less water. Um, and this is a very commonly misspelled, I mean, I suppose one could very fairly off, uh, argue at this point, if everyone says 10 items or less, then that's what the language is now, the end. And that is a fair point, and it's not wrong. But I, I cannot help, <laughs> I cannot help myself. It grates on me, and it should be 10 items or fewer in my brain. But uh, I know that that is an old man shaking fist at clouds moment, probably. Okay. Caregivers organization. Not sure what that's getting off getting at offhand. Attendance at a heavenly throne. Not sure. That'll probably become quite obvious with crosses. Presses into service. I mean it could be could be uses. That's pretty straightforward. Um, oh, musical that was the highest grossing movie in 1978 must be Greece. Sorry about that. Probably pretty clear. Uh, we never looked at these crosses over here. Biblical suffix with do or go. Well, this looks like eth, doeth or goeth. Soldier's food packet for short. I think this is an MRE. I don't recall exactly what that stands for, but that sounds right to me. And then this is a Gillette razor brand. Yes, our favorite bit of crossword ease, Atra. Very, very common crossword answer. One of those words I know solely from its presence in crosswords. Okay. Presses into service. I mean, it certainly could be uses, couldn't it? Clears up a jumble. Could be sorts. A 
land in Game of Thrones. Uh, I have not seen Game of Thrones. Um, hopefully the crosses help me out with that one. Ba -ba -ba. To put an edge on, this could be hone, as in to hone a knife or blade. Um, let's try that. Times Square sign for Broadway fans. Times Square sign for Broadway fans. Um, I'm less confident about this hone. Let's get rid of this. 1980 Devo hit. Um, it could be Whip It. Classic Devo track. Start of a carol title could be Hark. Hark the Herald Angels Sing. How Blank Your Mother. Well, uh, like Game of Thrones, I've not seen this, but I've certainly heard of it. How I Met Your Mother. Funders of many campaign ads in brief. So this is a um, United States specific political answer, which is PACs, I think. Political Action Committees, I believe that stands for. Times Square sign for Broadway fans. Ah, I see. So we've got Broadway abbreviated, which I should have pointed out. And it's ad advertising tickets or tickets, TKTs. Build. Uh, to build something is to erect it. Ah, uh, here we go. So to put an edge on is wet. And that is more accurate, actually, than honing, because I don't think honing actually creates a blade. Honing sort of evens out a blade, gets it unbent, whereas wetting, what you do with a wet stone when you actually uh, drag the blade against stone, you actually are creating a blade. Villain in the Book of Esther. You know, I don't know. I'm, I, I don't, uh, I don't, Recall that bit of biblical knowledge. T-Mobile acquisition of 2020. Here's another U.S. company. I think this is Sprint. All right. Attendance at a heavenly throne. I'm still not seeing it. I'm sorry. Deposit. I mean, it could be as simple as put in. Is that could that be? Sizzling. Well, something. Si oh, I see. Sorry, I see what that heavenly throne is. Um, that's seraphim, angels. Harold who directed Groundhog Day, that would be Harold Ramis. Santa blank, California. Uh, well, if you got this far with crosses and you did, you still didn't know this, you could probably guess, to be honest, because it's clearly, well, not clearly, but it looks, certainly looks like a Spanish phrase. So even if you've not heard of this city, Santa Rosa, I think would be a pretty good guess. They help with course selection. Uh, it could be menus. You order from a menu, you order courses. Feature of some dresses. So dresses is plural, but the feature is singular. So we're looking for a singular word here. So it could be a slit, as in a slit in a dress. Ground transportation hub. Um, maybe a bus depot. Key of box, the art of fugue. All right. So. I don't know what the key of this is offhand, but here's a, you get, you sort of get some crosses for free when you see this. Um, there are two different, there are two lengths, two, well, three, I suppose, common lengths, a key, a musical key could be in terms of letter count. The least common would be one, and that would simply be if the key were A, B, C, D, E, F, G, something like that. Uh, that's very uncommon because un un because that would require a, a, to, to have only one letter in an answer. That would require the, the square to be unchecked. In other words, not have any crosses, and that's uncommon, but it can happen. The two much more common lengths would be uh, four letters or five letters. If it's four letters, then you know it's going to be the name of a letter like A and then flat, A flat, which means a semitone, a half step below A, uh, A flat, um, or B flat, or whatever. So if it's four letters long, which this one obviously isn't, but if it is, you could pretty much put flat in there, and then you, 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 need, you need a cross to get the, the note itself. Uh, if it's five, it could be two things. It could be something sharp, like G, 
sharp, which is the uh, sort of counterpart to a flat. It's when the note is one semitone higher rather than lower. Um, but you don't know that it's sharp because it might not be sharp. It might be major or minor. And I'm not going to explain the musical theory behind what all this means. I'm just giving you a tip. <laughs> so um, if it's major or minor, if you have any of these letters anywhere in your crosses, you can fill in the other two because major and minor share this M, O, and R. So um, that was a long digression. Oh, and then also, you know, the first, the first letter is never going to be a letter further in the alphabet than G because the musical notes only go up to G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then they go back around to A. So this will never be anything other than, than A, B, C, D, E, F, or G at the beginning. And here, looking down, we have raison in French, and um, there's not raisin in English because it's O-N at the end, not I-N. So a uh, common phrase in French would be raison d'être, reason to be, your sort of um, life, I don't know, motivation, the thing that, that, that inspires you, propels you forward. Um, so now we know that this is either going to be D sharp, D major, or D minor. Uh, and I don't know which, I don't, uh, I never remember what key something is in. So um, we'll have to get some crosses to, to figure that out. A pun is said to be the lowest form of this. I would, I would imagine this to be wit, the lowest form of wit, sort of, uh, sounds like the sort of thing, I don't know, maybe Oscar Wilde would have said it or something, who knows. You betcha. I don't know. Follow, follower of Navy or presidential. Could be SEAL, Navy SEAL, presidential SEAL. In this case, used they're both in the same sense. They both mean a seal, meaning a sort of insignia that could be stamped on something or engraved, as opposed to neither of them means the animal. Frequent quotation abbreviation, or sorry, frequent quote, quotation attribution abbreviation. Um, I'm not actually sure what that's getting out of hand. I'm sure it'll become obvious. Playwright David. This could be David Mamet, who wrote Glenbury, Glen Ross, and many, many other plays. Um, so now we see that the key of box, the art of fugue, is going to be major or minor. So we can go ahead and put the OR at the end. And we can even look at some crosses to, to, to try to infer whether it's an uh, A or an I. And at this, in this third letter, you betcha. Why am I not seeing this? <laughs> I suppose wit could be incorrect. Sportscaster Andrews, I'm not sure. Cultivate a garden plot in a way. So this is um, some kind of gardening term. Oscar winning Zellweger would be Rene Zellweger, which uh, not that we, not that there are very many Zellwegers as far as I'm aware that are Oscar winning, but we had that cross there for all the good it did us. Private eye in old lingo. <clears throat> Um, so this is the sort of thing I largely know from crosswords. Uh, this could be a tech, as in detective tech. Um, Dick is another common one, as in Dick Tracy, um, detective, um, private Dick. But that obviously doesn't fit in three letters. Well, it, I guess that's not obvious. It is spelled D-I-C-K, so it doesn't fit in three letters. Tech does, and I bet that's what it is because of that E. Happy as a blank, happy as a clam is a common idiomatic phrase. No good cars are lemons. If a car, buy a car and it's just a complete wreck right off the bat. Singer musician with the Imagine Peace website. Well, this certainly sounds like Yoko Ono, right? With the allusion to Imagine by John Lennon. That's probably part of what's going on there. One pointer in horseshoes. Oh, I don't know. I guess horseshoes must have its own scoring system or something. Maybe a leaner, maybe I'm just sort of trying to imagine what might happen when you're playing horseshoes. I could imagine you throw the horseshoe at the peg or whatever it is, and it sort of leans against it, but doesn't cleanly fall. I could imagine that being the case. Uh, oh, I see. So I bet it, I bet it is actually, because cultivate a garden plot, could this be rototill? Something to do with sort of rotating the soil, I think, that, that rings a bell to me. 
And if you're moonstruck, you're in love. Let's get back over here at one point. So let's let's try leaner and see. Unkempt person. Uh, Slaven, as in slovenly. Informal eateries are diners. Recorded. It could be on tape. It looks likely, given the number of letters. A suffix with bachelor. This could be bachelorette. Place to walk a dog. I suppose a park, a dog park, or any other park. Scrape out. Another very common, I mean, a perfectly legitimate ordinary word, but also a very common crossword word. Scrape out, eke out. Melodramatic cry. Ah, me, I think. A-H-M-E. I was thinking alas or something, but that obviously doesn't fit the crosses. So probably ah, me, milliner's creation. Yes, a milliner um, creates hats. Once had an odd dream in which there was a millinery operation, a milliner that was sort of like a factory and children were employed in the sort of Victorian, you know, factory setting, but they were milliners. They had to make hats. It was the strangest dream and I had no idea what it meant. Old TV star with the catchphrase, I pity the fool. Uh, this was Mr. T. Ah, okay. Butler in a romance. So this would be Rhett Butler from a Gone with, Gone with the Wind, I think. Cry just before the guest of honor arrives at a surprise party. I suppose you would cry hide to your fellow attendees. Uh, proofreader's directive. All right, so here's a bit of lingo that um, is, it doesn't, isn't specific to crosswords, certainly, but probably is one of the more common places you'll see this kind of thing these days. I think this is stet which is a bit, this is the this is vocabulary that's used by editors, say a newspaper editor, for instance, um, in a, maybe in a red pen editing a manuscript. And it's the kind of thing that um, in daily life you're not going to see very often, but it does come up in the crossword from time to time. I'm sorry, my eye is just drawn to this cross here. What you might do, because this looks like market here, what you might do after some financial trading or in this puzzle, ah, and we can see market, the market. The words the market are anagrammed, are, are uh, rearranged in these four squares, these four shaded squares. So what you might do after financial trading, something, the market, we can certainly put that part in. Ah, and they are in the corners. They are in the corners of this grid. You may corner the market. In other words, you might, um, if you have an inside line that, say, in a commodities market, uh, like the film um, Trading Places, uh, they corner the market for pork bellies or orange juice or something um, by driving the price down, buying it all up, and then the price goes back up and, and they can sell it high. Or, the, or they did vice versa, I don't remember. But uh, yeah, cornering the market, that's very clever. And we've got these corners full of market. Texas Ranger Hall of Fame locale. Not sure offhand. Fiscal subject. Uh, ah, nice. A nice cross with cornering the market. E uh, econ economics. Singer Borellis. Oh, I want to say this is Sarah. I might be saying her name incorrectly. I apologize. Out blank limb. Out on a limb. Going out on a limb slightly with Sarah, but I don't think I'm going out very far. Uh, okay. Ah, here's another very common crossword word. Blank bowl, fruity treat. This is one that I don't know if I first saw this in a crossword, but I certainly at this point most frequently see it in a crossword. Although I suspect there are people who live a more uh, dedicatedly healthy dietary lifestyle than I do, who maybe are more common with this from life. And it is, I think, acai, acai which is, um, oh, so I guess a sort of berry or something that's used in smoothies often, I think. It's a sort of one of those superfood sort of things. Um, and it's become very trendy, and it's also become very trendy in the crossword. So a thing to keep in mind. Hindi master, uh, this should be Sahib. Violin bow applications. We've got another musical clue here. This is uh, rosin. This is... Um, would rub this on the strings of your violin bow, and it helps create the tension that, uh, the, the, the sorry, the friction, the friction 
that the bow needs in order to create a sound when rubbed against the strings of the violin. Sportscaster Andrews. Well, this certainly looks like Aaron Andrews, doesn't it? And that would make, oops, Aaron D minor. That would make this D minor. You betcha. Now I thought this might be Will, but I, I wasn't seeing what the uh, what the implication of that was. Website designers code. This would be HTML hypertext markup language. Okay, frequent quotation and attribution. Why am I not seeing that? Run blank light. Low carb kind of diet. All right. Well, uh, I guess sort of slightly resonant with our acai here. Uh, this would be the keto diet, the sort of diet with no carbs, lots of meat and vegetables, I think. Oh, I see. You betcha will do. So this is this is a yeah, of course. I should have I should have picked up on the betcha, which is a very informal bit of language. As uh, if it said you bet, maybe that would be slightly different, but this says you betcha. So it's really getting at at, at something very informal. So will do, an informal way of saying this. Run. What is this? Why am I not seeing this? So, oh, I see. Sorry, I was looking at it. I was trying to make this one word, but it's two words. Run a red light. And then that makes our frequent quotation attribution, S-H-A-K, an abbreviation of Shakespeare. All right, very good. Uh, Texas Ranger Hall of Fame locale. Okay, well, I don't know anything about the Texas Ranger Hall of Fame, but I have heard of Waco, Texas. Um, uh, site of a... a, a federal disaster, uh, government sort of overreach, fatal consequences in the 1990s. So that must make the land of Game of Thrones, Westeros. <clears throat> Soon to be alumni, so this will be seniors, as in uh, your senior year, soon you'll be graduated, and then you will be, uh, you will no longer be at that school, but it will have been your alma mater, so you are an alumnus or an alumna. Problem on a vinyl record is a skip Mulligan to a golfer, I suppose, is a redo. And that's the puzzle. So there's our Tuesday puzzle. A bit more resistance than yesterday as a, mon on a yesterday's Monday puzzle, which we would expect. But not too bad. I like this, um, the market in the corners, cornering the market. That was very clever, very well done. And then that little econ cross was a nice, a nice flourish there. And I hope that this this key tip was helpful. I know that that was a pretty long and involved, whereas most of the, most of the tips tend to boil down to this word comes up a lot, um, which happened as well with uh, stet, with acai. I, I could be saying that incorrectly. Um, atra. I'm trying to think, are there any other very common? crossword words in here. Eek, another very common one. Um, yeah, those are those are the big ones. Aaron is actually not uncommon, but I would say, honestly, one of the most common clues for Aaron would be around a poetic name for Ireland, something like that. Uh, very common. So anyway, yeah, back to this. I hope this minor and major makes sense. So basically, the thing to remember is that a key will always start with a letter from A to G and it will be followed by either flat, sharp, major, or minor. Really, that's the that's the tip. And then from that point, you can make some inferences based on the length of the answer, based on crosses you have, and try to fill it in from there. I mean, you know, I tend to have a, generally a pretty good knowledge base around the musical clues, but realistically, I, I wouldn't have remembered that this was D minor. I, I don't know if I... I it's just not the sort of <laughs> knowledge I carry around in my head. So I use I use this same set of inferences and let the let the crosses sort it out for me most of the time. Um, all right. So I hope you enjoyed that Tuesday puzzle by Trip Payne. I did. And I hope you're enjoying this series generally, which I also am. I'm enjoying doing it. And I hope you're enjoying watching it. If so, uh, subscribe to the channel so that you see these videos as they go up every morning. Um, my intention is to keep doing these for the foreseeable future unless events um, dictate otherwise, but I hope that's not the case. And uh, one of the reasons I, I really feel 
um, determined to do that is because people have been supporting me directly through my coffee page, which is linked underneath this video. And then eventually at the end of the video on the screen, it'll pop up as a link. And that support means a great deal to me and does give me um, a sense of responsibility that I need to keep this thing going in the way that I've established. And um, if you're able to toss me a couple of quid or a few bucks, which I realize not everyone's in a position to do, which is perfectly fine, um, I would appreciate it enormously and it would help um, it would help me figure out how to make this thing a sustainable part of my day. So uh, I'll leave that there. I'll be back tomorrow for a Wednesday puzzle for our midweek, mid-challenge Wednesday puzzle. And I hope to see you solving as well. So with that, I'm off. Have an excellent Tuesday. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Mm -hmm.